Hey all, welcome to the Thursday functional group update. This is the support functional group update. I'm the Matos from the support land team. I am gonna full screen and we'll dive in. If you have anything that you throw in chat, I'll address it at the end. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so diving right in, let's jump into the highlights. Um, we have one offer out right now for an APAC service, oh geez, support engineer. And I'm really, really, really excited about that. Uh, so that's really awesome. And we have two more support engineers in the late stage pipeline. So that's really great. Uh, we'll go from there and we're looking to bring them on as well. And we have two other uh, positions approved, so we want to hire at least two more. This is going to help with load and help us grow this team so that we can support our customers better and faster. We've made some new processes to improve response time, which I'll dive into a little bit later. I want to give a shout out to the support team because we've been doing a great job of getting documentation updated inside of uh, support, just what we do internally, as well as for GitLab, the product as well as our initiatives in helping each other learn and grow, we've been averaging one pairing session a day this quarter, at least one, which has been phenomenal. Uh, go ahead, did somebody pop in? All right, cool, I'm gonna keep going. I can't see you all, because I'm full screen, so if anything's crazy, um, just shout out, um, but otherwise, we'll keep it moving. So we get to the thangs section. And these are a couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, things that are on support's mind, and I know for a fact are on sales mind, are breaching tickets. We'll talk about that. We'll take a quick minute to talk about OKRs. We have a new concept, services support. Uh, here's a link to an issue where I want to talk about our plan to maintain Git host. We need to figure out what needs to be done and, and prioritizing and making sure that there's alignment there uh, so we know how we're going to make sure that Git host is the best it can be. Um, the other piece here that's really exciting is we're working on a new flow here for trials. This has been a long time coming, uh, so that's very exciting. There's a work in progress MR that should be wrapped up later today, and I will announce that on the sales call on Monday to clarify with sales on how to get support for trials. The last thing that we'll talk about is some confusing product stories that we have from customers who've tried uh, GitLab and ran into some issues. So every support call, I like to show the backlog. Right now, it's pretty flat. We're trending ever so slightly down, which is good. We've tamed it. We've gotten our handle on it. That's good. Um, things that might make this go crazy, 10.0. That's what our minds are. That's where we're at. That's what we're thinking about. When we release 10.0, um, depending on what happens in 10.0, this could go out of control. So we're just trying to do everything we can to prepare for that. Um, this table I normally show as well. This has been really important to our process. We've been used to make sure that support, and by that I mean that we're not creating debt. And you can see any green uh, means that we were at least 100% efficient. If it's red, that means we created debt. I've added a new column here, uh, which is really helpful because you cannot compare week over week as a percentage because each week has a different value, actually. So the last new column tickets gives us an absolute value of actually how much of the backlog we've made. If it was red, we've added to the backlog, or if it's green, that we've taken from the backlog. So these are um, very important things to see. For example, I'm gonna highlight right now week 26 um, with 86 tickets were added to the backlog. That's gonna be relevant later as we dive in. Now we get to the hard thing. This is, uh, you know, a value at GitLab is transparency. We need to be transparent about what we're delivering. And this is specifically breaching tickets. And what that means is in support, we have tickets that come in. Every email that comes into support gets converted into a ticket. A ticket gets an SLA clock, a service level agreement clock. That clock is depending on their plan, 
where they've submitted the um, if they're a .com user or things like that, which we adjust their SLA. Um, so across all of our SLAs, premium, regular, every SLA, in Q1, we had a 75% SLA achievement. Obviously, we want this number to be 100%. In Q2, we hit 78%. So far in Q3, we're at 70%. Looking at these numbers, it looks like, oh my gosh, Q3, we're doing really bad. But I want to show more of the picture here that makes it really important. On our uh, premium support page where we talk about when you buy support, what you get, we advertise this 12 hour window that we will support you from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is a 12 hour window. And in Q1, we were using that 12 hour window. In Q2, we were using that 12 hour window. And right at the end of Q2, um, we are trying to get to 24 or five advertised coverage. A few support calls ago, uh, functional group updates, I talked about this. And on our effort to getting there, uh, we've bumped up our um, business hours to 20 hours. So that, that means that the clock is running for eight more hours a day. And that means we have 60% more coverage on the board. We're saying, okay, we want to be responsible for 60% more. Um, and we only had an 8% drop. So we're doing better than we were before in the sense that we have more time that we're covering, but we need to get, we need to get this to 100. And how do we get there? Uh, so those things are on our brain. And I'm going to talk about some ideas here. So the old flow that we used was very simple. It was in computer science terms, you would call it a FIFO, uh, first in, first out. Um, we would sort by breach clock, by the SLA clock, which would determine whatever one is going to happen next, or if it has already breached, that is where we go. But we started looking at that, and I want to give a shout out to Colin on the support team because he came up with this great idea. We made this new flow, and it's a lot more com complex, and the decision tree here is more difficult. But the way that we're doing it is in this order. Effectively, we're focusing on premium customers that are about to breach first. We don't want to make more of a mess. So one, we focus there. Then we focus our attention on any premium customers who we may have missed their SLA. We've already missed it, so now we need to clean that up. Then we do the same for our Enterprise Edition customers. And then we do the same for any Enterprise Edition customers that may have already breached. This lets us uh, make sure that we don't, by focusing on, before what would happen is if somebody breached, we'd work on them. And then while we're working on them, someone else may have breached, which is going to affect the numbers. Um, so, and I want to take a step back to be really, really, really clear here. I've done support for a long time. And it's really easy to game support numbers. I want to say that. I want to own that. And that is not what we're going to do at GitLab. That's not what I want to do ever. That's nothing. You know, we could build a script right now that if a ticket is going to breach within 10 minutes, a robot replies and will never breach. And to me, that is the uh, antithesis of good support. That is not what I want us to be doing. That is not how I want us to be thinking about this. This is an important number and an important metric, but good, accurate support for our customers is the number one priority, and then we go fast. Uh, so I wanna make that clear. So I have some graphs here, and the thing we really wanna focus on are the last two weeks. Um, the last, this week, the column that we see there, week 32, we've already seen a huge uptick from where we were with this new process. So that's really exciting. And I expect this to rise week over week because we're focusing on making less mess and cleaning it up faster. This next graph is incredibly important because you can see this huge spike and you're gonna say, what happened there? If we look, week 26, what happened on week 26? That was the week that we released GitLab version 9.3. And when we released GitLab version 9.3, we had 86 tickets go into debt because we had over 100 more tickets uh, over the average were created that week. Somebody is unmuted, so check your mic. I hear you typing. Um, so I want to emphasize to the team, I've been asked in a couple of meetings a couple of times, what can we do to help support? How, do, how can we get developers to come in and help? We need to get our releases 100%. 
If we have any flubs with our releases, if they are not as smooth as possible, this is what happens. We get backlog, then we go into debt, and then we have to work out of our breached tickets. And you can see over the past six weeks, we've drastically dropped week over week, push that down. We've gotten faster and faster and worked through the debt. Uh, so this shows that you know, we are able to move through, but at any moment, uh, our risks are releases. A new release, if, if there's anything wrong with that release, it's going to blow us out of the water. Um, so, and that's gonna be helped as we hire more to give us more coverage, but I just wanna keep that in mind. This is the best graph to uh, show that to the team when a release gets a mess, we get backlogged, our breach, everything starts to breach, then you know, we fail and we need to recover from that. And this last graph shows, um, again, focusing on the last two weeks, this is our premium SLA metric just for premium customers, their first reply time and their next reply time. We've seen a huge uptick there and that's very, very exciting. And if you're wondering about week 19, why it was like at 100 and dropped, that's because the way that SLAs were applied, I do not believe was correct around week 19. So it's that data is inaccurate. Uh, we've adjusted it and this, is, and this is what we see. So I'm sure there'll be questions about that. We'll dive into that in a little bit, but I wanna move on to this idea of services support. Um, right now we're testing our documentation and working everything we can to document our processes all across support so that we can scale. For example, this week, uh, Cindy and I in a pairing session figured out how Git host backups work. Before that, there was no documentation. Uh, it was trapped in Drew's brain. Um, so we figured it out. We've written that, Drew's reviewed that, that's great. We now have documentation on how that works. That's in preparation for this new uh, group that we're building here focused on services support. Um, what's happening right now is we have a really great support team, really smart with a lot of technical knowledge. And we are focusing our time, uh, three of us at this moment, myself, uh, Ari Hunt and Cindy are focusing our time with GitLab.com issues and Git host issues. And these can range from help my account is broken to I purchased something and I'm not sure what I got and I'm not sure what broke. And these are problems that require a smart person to solve, someone who is uh, detail oriented and smart, but they do not need to have deep Linux internals knowledge. So we are spending our time solving these problems when we could be diving deep with customer problems uh, with their instances and getting bugs fixed faster. So the focus here is on gitlab.com and git host and building processes that are going to uh, enable that support. I know that there are a ton of people that can do this um, services based support um, that do not have the deep Linux internal skills that they need to do what a support engineer does right now. They could learn that. Or there's plenty of room to grow at GitLab and build support process and build tooling to make that experience as fast as possible. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, that means that going forward, as we develop out this team, there will be an EE support group that will focus on paying EE on-premises customers and those customers you know we're going to dive in and you need technical knowledge you need to understand linux you need to understand all the crazy stuff that gitlab gets deployed on so in that uh, we're looking to hire about three services support members uh, by the end of the year and until we do that and as we do that we will fill the role um, we will act as services support uh, to help uh, get that process in order, get those things set up, and build that function out. That's going to help us because every time that we're able to hire a services support um, staff member, that means that one of our support engineers is going to be able to then focus on EE support, which means that we've grown our EE team by one, which hopefully means we're going to go faster and, 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 and just crush. Uh, so that's really exciting. So I want to take a second to talk about our OKRs, our goals for the quarter. We have three. We wanna log every time that we need console access on gitlab.com and how we can avoid that. So I have an issue here that you can check out. Um, and we, we right now, the way that we do it is anytime we reach out on Slack, we have that captured in Zendesk. So we need to just transfer that data to issues. Uh, so Ari Hunt, Cindy and I are gonna be working on that, making sure that that's clear and getting those issues created. 
Reducing time to solve, this right now is at risk, is failing because we have a ton of breaching tickets. We need to get those down. We're working through that. You saw us moving uh, through that and we're getting better there and our new processes should help. Um, I think we may be able to make this up by the end of the quarter, um, but I think it's gonna be hard to do. Uh, so we may not reach that, but on our way to reaching that, we may have found better processes uh, that help our team. And we also want to use Service Desk for security related issues instead of Zendesk. And I have things set up and I wanna test that later this week. So that's exciting uh, to dog food our product. This is a good time to take a step back and say, um, if you're a lead or if you work on a team, Take a moment and think about the processes that you're using to solve your problems. This past month for us, we evaluated a bunch of things that were not working, changed them, and saw immediate results. Is there a chance right now that you're using a process on your team that worked but is not the right process right now? There was a great article on the Intercom blog. Um, they were interviewing the director of support at Slack, and she talked about the fact that at Slack, their support process change, changes about every nine months because their problem set changes, which is we're embodying here. And I'm wondering if that applies to you and your team. So keep that in mind. Um, there might be a process that you're using that just doesn't work anymore. How can you change it? So in that vein, there is a process in support that doesn't work and we are figuring out how to change it. Uh, this is around social engineering. So I'm gonna share a really quick story with you all. Um, spoiler alert, I've been socially engineered, not at GitLab, but at a prior job. And I'll explain what that is if you've never experienced that or know what that is. Um, effectively, what happened was I was working in support, a customer called in and said, hey, you know, I need to change the information on my account. Uh, this is the information I have. I need to update this email address, which is a benign ask. They verified all of the things that we asked for. They knew the address on the account, the email address that was currently there. They knew the billing address. They had the credit card information, which was what we used as the process at that time at that company. And I said, all right, sounds great. I changed their email address on file and thought nothing of it. Made a note that they called in and changed their email address. And about an hour later, we got a call in from somebody that said, hey, um, actually a disgruntled employee of mine uh, who we are firing just called in to change all of the information on the account. Uh, how can we regain access? And they then, the disgruntled employee changed all of the data on the account so that this person who was actually the rightful owner could not authenticate because we would ask the questions, well, what's the address on the account? What's this? What's that? They went in and changed it all. And at that moment, you know, we, I was socially engineered. I gave someone access to something that they shouldn't have and there was no way to confirm the rightful owner. So we had to figure out how to, how to debunk that. And ultimately, uh, with other people in the team's help, we were able to do that. But at GitLab right now, we have these scenarios where customers are, are saying, hey, uh, I can't access my account, or I need this, or can you tell me the email address associated with this account? And we really need to figure out for .com how we're gonna proceed with this to avoid socially engineered attacks, things like that. I have two customers in the queue right now that I'm working with trying to figure out how we can authenticate them to verify that they have access uh, or that they should have access. Uh, so that's something that I wanna keep in mind and that's something that we are working on. And that brings us to this idea right now um, that we have a ton of products and in this past month, I've seen two instances where confused customers were very confused. We had one where a Git host user had a problem. They really wanted our attention, so they wanted to get by support to get a four hour SLA and get emergency based support. Um, but they ended up purchasing a .com silver support plan, which gives them four hour support for .com, so that that didn't really work. Ultimately, I saw it, we fixed it, we did it, but that wasn't right. Um, and then we had a .com user who needed support and they wanted to get faster support. They ended up purchasing a one license EE license uh, to try and get support from us faster. And that was not that they should have purchased a silver plan. So this brings us to this idea of right now our product matrix, you can have Git host with 
uh, one of four active plans, one of four legacy plans. You can also have runners and you can also potentially have CE, EES, or EEP. You can have GitLab.com with four plan types. You can also have on-premises with a legacy plan and EES and EEP, and potentially going forward, EEP, or excuse me, EE Ultimate. So right now we have a ton of offerings, which is great, but when it comes to support, it's not 100% clear to our customers where and how, what you get, when and how. You know, that's that sentence was confusing. That's how it feels. And I want to just emphasize that uh, I made an issue here. I'm sure there are other customers that are in this boat that have purchased the wrong thing. And right now we do not know. And when they go to get support and we find out that it's wrong, we're going to fix it. Um, but that's going to lead to friction. So this is something that we want to think about as a company. How can we streamline this and make this clearer? Uh, because people are buying things which are good. They're trying to get access to support, but they end up buying the wrong thing, which is bad. Uh, so we want to think about that. If you have any ideas or can help, pop in that issue and, and would love to hear. So we get to our needs section. We need to fill EMEA. Our US team, we are potentially going to have two offers going out, which is great, or excuse me, our America's team. We're looking for one more, an APAC that is potentially going to be filled. Our EMEA team right now is two members. We want to get that up to four. Uh, so that's something that if you know anyone in EMEA, if you have any ideas on how we can get traction in EMEA, we'd love to hear it. Um, I want to propose, you know, a German entity, maybe that we can tap into the Berlin market or things like that. Um, because I think that there are people, we're just not able to capture them and I'm not sure why, um, but we absolutely need EMEA support. Uh, that is our hugest weak point right now. Sales, if you're working in sales, please, please, please go to your accounts, verify their support level. This is what we're using in Zendesk to make sure they get the right SLA. We have a couple of customers that have interesting products, custom agreements and things like that, um, that, that may have been legacy or something that we've converted them in some way. And if that's not reflected appropriately in Salesforce, it will not be reflected appropriately in Zendesk. I saw an instance of that happen this past week because I knew the customer, I was able to give them the appropriate support. Um, but if I don't recognize the customer, they will not get the appropriate support. So check Salesforce DC, make sure that that's correct. Also want to say a sentence here that it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I think it's important. Support has been really helpful. We've been doing everything we can to help every department. But as you see, we're not hitting our SLA targets. And that's something that is huge and we need to. So if anyone in support says no uh, to an ask that you have from them, it's pr probably because of breaching tickets and we need to focus on that. And I've made it clear to the support team that that is our number one priority. Make sure that our house is in order before we go and help other teams and help out with other processes. We need to, that's what we're being measured on and we need to make sure that we're hitting that. Um, the other last thing, just as a reiteration, we wanna make sure that customers know what they have, what they get with what they've purchased and also the other products that we offer because maybe something else is a better fit. I think that that's really important to uh, reiterate. So lastly, give a shout out to everyone here Colin came up with the idea of not making more of a mess for ourselves and building a different queue. It's a little bit more complex, but it's working. So I'm happy about that. Adam has been working on a tool called Omnibus Vagrant, which has been insanely helpful to increase our speed in debugging problems. And Colin's also been working on support bot and got us some new views there. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Stan. He jumped in a pairing session with Chen Jie, did a ton, a ton of great stuff, and they developed and fixed some things there. So I was really happy, and I appreciate that Stan was willing to jump in and help us there. And I want to give a shout out to sales. You all have been great in understanding that we are not achieving what we want to achieve. We are not as fast as we want to be right now, but we're working through it. Thank you for being understanding as we're working through that. New hires are going to help. We're building new processes etc etc so i'll open the floor to questions i'll take a look at the chat i got 24 in there so i'm kind of kind of scared to see what i got but let's see what we got going on here uh so um shout out to chen Jie for the docs um should we treat git host customers separately from ee so yeah simon so what happens right now git host customers come into 
our services support side and they do get treated separately from EE unless they have an EE subscription. And if they do, then they land on the EE side because they have an EE subscription. Uh, so that is, um, that's how that gets handled. Molly asks, where do EE trials come into play? Um, I'm assuming that's coming in with breach tickets and things like that. That's something that we're, we are going to figure out this week um, when I finish that MR, um, what SLA we want to give to trials. Obviously, we want to give them what they would expect if they had support, but in the scope of actually supporting our customers who've paid us and supporting people who might pay us, there's a tough balance there. So we need to figure that out. Uh, and that's something that we need to uh, focus on. But we're building a new flow, which is going to help us get better data as to what is the volume of trials. So that will help. And then we'll be able to see how much pain trials may be causing us. Um, then we have um, someone, the GitLab moderator says, can you clarify our, our premium support commitment 24-7, not 27? So premium support right now is a four-hour SLA. And that SLA is based on business hours. And business hours right now are 27. So they technically have a 27 uh, SLA and it does not, excuse me, 25 SLA. But our premium customers also have access to emergency. Um, they have access to that. So they can trigger um, an emergency at any time. So if they trigger an emergency, we'll respond within 30 minutes. So any normal premium ticket, and I'm Sorry that my camera's busted right now, but any normal ticket uh, will land in a 25 view. Um, if they have an emergency, it will page the on call and we'll give them a response in 30 minutes. Uh, so that's something there. So Toon says, what are the consequences? And I know I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, what are the consequences of when a ticket breaches? Um, we are sad, we failed a customer. Uh, it, it messes up our metrics. Um, the consequences are we've failed, you know, and they've waited longer than we've said they should wait to get a response. Depending on the nature of the ticket, um, it might mean that they're extra frustrated or sometimes, for example, we've had some tickets that breach where they said, okay, thanks. And that we've had so many other tickets in front of that one that by the time we got to that one, just saying thank Thank you to the customer we were we breached and so that's what we're trying to also get a handle on making sure that simple cases where we should not have any breach happen that we're handling uh, so that's that's one of the things there um, who is user GitLab we think it's Larry um, then we have Victor has uh, talks about social engineering uh, so that's something that we we talked about it and there um and that's something that we're trying to grow thanks for your support everyone talking about uh trying to uh support us in, in improving so i just want to open the floor if there's any last questions if anybody has any last hey, things hey, that they want to ask is, or this is sure. yeah, this is victor um so you talk about uh a lot of just evolving your process all the time um so are you doing things like um updating faq sending you know people to different pages for support, um, like what, what are the steps you're doing just at a high level or examples that you can share with us that, that have been effective? Sure, and, and in our sense, a lot of our process has been just how do we handle the influx of tickets? Um, and in that vein, that's where a lot of our process focus has been. But other things we've done there have been just making sure that our internal flow documentation is correct which we didn't have, you know, like I said, as of two days ago, no one besides Drew knew how GitLab or Git, Git host backups worked, you know? So making sure that that's documented, clear, and spreading that knowledge. Um, as well as that, we've been doing, um, yep, we'll end the call. Um, we've been doing some stuff where the, um, making sure documentation in GitLab Docs is up to date. So I'll end that call. Victor, we'll talk more about this later. Thank you everyone for joining. Have fun on the team call. See you soon. Bye.